Hola everyone! Welcome to Flexibility Script. Today's video is an important one as it's diving into hypermobility and how hypermobility can often be confused with flexibility. It's really important to know where you yourself and if you're a health and fitness professional where your client or patient falls in terms of their mobility as usually most people address flexibility by stretching and in some individuals who may be more hypermobile stretching can often be contraindicated and can be a cause of their pain and lead to injury as well. There's this assessment that's really easily done called the Baton score. The Baton score looks at five different areas of areas of the body and you can get up to a total of nine points can be your total score. Um, we're looking at the pinkies, so it's one point, this is two points. You're looking at the thumbs, this is a third and the fourth point. You're looking at the elbows, five and six. When you look at the knees, seven and eight. And then the ninth point is, and the last thing you're looking at is the ability to touch your palms to the floor without bending your knees. And that's the ninth point that you can be awarded. So five things you're looking at, El um, elbows, sorry, <laughs> pinkies, thumbs, elbows, knees, and the ability to get the palms to the floor without bending the knees. When you look at the, the bait and score, if you end up falling on the higher side, like you get seven, eight, or nine out of the nine points available, you'll tend to fall more into that hypermobile category, meaning there's this laxity in your soft tissue structures, such as your um, ligaments, your joint capsules and muscles that allow you to move into different movements and positions with ease without any extra effort put forth in order to get there. It, with that being said, there's also, with its excessive range of motion, you're also lacking a bit of stability at the joint capsule. So um, if you participate in sports that require extra flexibility and you are on the hypermobile side, you will excel in them. You just need a lot of strength in, in the musculature in order to prevent yourself from injuring yourself due to this extra range of motion that you do have present in the joints. Um, on the opposite end, if you end up scoring a little low on the beat in score, so you fall in that zero, one, or two, know that you can use everything the flexibility world has to offer to improve your flexibility. So you can end up using the bands for mobilizations, um, any type of self myofascial release tool like the lacrosse ball, and you can also use stretching techniques in order to improve your flexibility without risking injury. Um, the nine points, so we'll get into the bait and score now. So we're, one of the points you're looking at, the thumb, so you're looking to see if the thumb can move back to touch the forearm with ease. So when you ask the person to bring, see if they can bring their thumb back to touch the forearm, as soon as they go into doing it, this thumb just touches the forearm. I, I don't have a point here, it's zero points for me there. Um, so if I were to do that and do that on each side, there's two points out of the nine. So the next point I said is the pinkies. So the ability to move the pinky to 90, or I should say a little beyond that 90 degrees as you see in the picture there. So if you're able to do that, I'll demonstrate here. So mine is zero points as you can see, mine doesn't move back. Um, that's by that's not me by the way so that's um one of my clients tanya so if you're able to move this back to 90 or past it you'll get a point and so i have zero points on each side i mentioned the elbows and the knees for the elbows and knees you just want to make sure that you are locking out your elbows and locking out your knees before you check so if you lock out your elbows and you see this where there's this extra extensibility to the elbow and it hyperextends, you you get a point. And if you have both sides, you get a point for each side. And then when looking at the knees, you're looking at the same thing. When you go into locking the knee out, there's this extra laxity and the knee actually goes into a bit of hyperextension beyond 10 degrees. So the very last point um, is the palms to floor. So if you can bend over, and touch your palms to the floor without bending the knees as you see in the picture there. That gets a point. No, it's palms to the floor, not your toes to the floor. And know that when you're giving points, when you're doing this on yourself or on others, um, 
there's really no effort put forth in order to get the palms to the floor. Just you ask them to bend over and their palms just hit the floor. And um, and you ask them to bring their thumb back and it just moves with ease. It's not forced into that. Um, when you're looking at these points, know that even though we're looking at just, you know, the pinkies and the thumbs and the elbows and knees and that palms to the floor, know that it's giving you an idea of hypermobility and the widespread range in the body. So even though I'm just looking at pinkies and thumbs, know that this extra laxity is happening, especially if I fall on the high side, a seven, eight or nine out of nine, know this extra laxity is happening at the shoulders, at the neck, at the hips, at the ankles, and that I'm more likely if I am on the higher side to have injuries related to my joint capsules like a clavicle popping out of place or ankle spraining and if I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum I'm more likely to have the muscle type of injuries where I'm trying to maybe going into a hamstring stretch and I overstretch and I end up tearing the musculature because of the lack of mobility and so more likely to have muscle type of injuries when you're on the other side of the spectrum so knowing where you fall, and if, sorry, if you fall right in the middle, know that there's areas in your body that you may have some extra mobility in and some areas you may not. So it's kind of um, assessing and picking and choosing what areas that you, you yourself may need to be addressed um, in order to improve your flexibility. Um, knowing where you fall is really important as a big part of one of the reasons why we stretch or we work out and we train is to um, feel good and prevent injury and stay safe. So if you fall again on the shorter side of the score, so on the lower end of the bait and score, know that all things in the flexibility world, a flexibility world will be safe for you to use without um, risking injury. And on the opposite end, if you fall a little higher side, know that strength training and stabilizing the joint will be really important. And if you do feel tightness, know that stretching will not will not help that tightness go away. Um, what will have help that tightness go away is releasing the soft tissue. So some myofascial release that you either do on yourself or you seek a massage therapist to help you with when you feel tightness in order to prevent injury. Also for the high, on the hypermobile side, if you do participate in sports that uh, require extra flexibility, you will excel at them. But when it comes to stretching, participating in more active flexibility work where you're activating musculature in order to get into um, positions as opposed to passively stretching will be um, will be key to not get hurt. Um, I hope this all helps and you can see where you fall and in the videos to come I'll always probably be touching base on it because it's an important part to make sure you don't hurt yourselves as you partake in any flexibility work um, any flexibility work um, all right more to come stay tuned